Good morning, everybody. Mike Vaki, PrincetonTrader.com, here with your Jobs Report Friday market webcast. Okay, so we got jobs in about 25 minutes. So I'll make this quick. Um, another day, another new high. It just keeps rinsing and repeating the new highs. I want to talk about a concept that I don't get a chance to talk about a lot, which is, you know, we're big on the daily chart when we get into band rides. And when I talk about the bands, I'm talking about the Bollinger Bands, upper band and lower band. And when I say it rides a band, it means it it interacts with that band for, for multiple sessions. Um, we tend to use that in the room as a way to stay on the, on the right side of the trade. I mean, we've done a few shorts here and there. We didn't do any yesterday. We bought the open and then we, you know, we sat around, we tried some later in the afternoon, didn't really do much for us. And then we end up buying 91.75. And uh, I, I took my runner on a 10 handle stop last night. Um, I know other people are still in it because they didn't do that and they're having a better morning than I am. But so for me, you know, we're flat, but the band ride is not a indication that we're overbought. It's not an indication of, of a whole hell of a lot of anything, except that price is heading, you know, it's, it's a momentum trade to the upside. Um, the, the key in trading any any trend, whether it's uptrend or downtrend, is to just go with the flow, stay with the flow, stop trying to sit around being some kind of a contrarian, picking tops or picking bottoms every day. Um, I would rather let inflection points fight it out and then trade in the direction of the move, hold in the direction of the move and make money in the direction of the move. That's, that's a much uh, more uh, risk responsible and there's more handles that way too. Um, so right now we're in what I call a secondary band ride. Um, the, the, the Bollinger bandwidth is 4.47. That's nothing. Like I said, we talked two or three days ago about the, how the bands were just starting to expand. So back on the week between Christmas and New Year's, we interacted with the band for a period of four going on five days. Okay. We talked about that when I got back from vacation, we interacted for a few days with the middle band, the 20 day simple moving average. Then it hopped up to the upper band and rode there, which is why we didn't really do anything the week between Christmas and New Year's. But, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, when you look back, it was just this steady drip to the upside. It was bit, it was bit. The price wanted to live above the 20 day, not below it. So we get to Monday, they do the one move down. Okay. They do the one move down on Monday and they spend a day not interacting with the upper band, but you're creating higher lows. And I warned them then, what are you doing? You got to finish, couldn't finish. By Wednesday, you re-engage the upper band. You close below it, but you re-engage it. So at that point you had danger of a secondary band ride. And yesterday morning on the breakout move over the top of 75, you got it. And now you're hanging out above the band. What secondary band rides do is they catch everybody leaning the wrong way on the tips of their skis. They want the damn thing to go down and go down hard here and here. They engage them. They try to hold the line at 75, which is your high from the initial break. They take it out and we instantly, if you look at the chart from yesterday, when we broke out finally above 75, you saw another 20 to, you know, 20, 25 handles rapidly, rapidly. And that's the power of that secondary band ride. So now the issue is how long do we stay up here? I don't know. Don't really care. I have no idea. We'll stay here as long as we stay here and we'll trade price. Despite any noise that's out there in the world, despite anything that anybody thinks despite whatever, you know, whatever everybody reads in Barron's this weekend, it doesn't matter. Price matters. And they're going to bleed this thing up until they're done. Um, hourly chart. We're above everything. Remember they had their chance back here, the bears, and they couldn't get it done. They couldn't hold it for a whole Globex session. Same rule I've been discussing. I say for my, it's been about four months now. It's been about four months. Pick any two lines close below them, hold them for an entire Globex, and we'll talk about the bears being relevant. They're not relevant.
not on a consistent basis. They were a great short for us, but it was just a trade. And as you know, as long as you're going to start building higher lows like they did on Tuesday and again on Wednesday, and the monthly pivot holds, and you get a move out, and then it can't do anything, <clears throat> and then you know this consistent area of resistance at 75 finally gets popped above. Off we go. So we tried traded as high as 38, 17, 75. Um, we're trading right now at 07.75. Uh, volume weighted average price is 07.75. Uh, five minute mid band is 08. Proprietary moving average is 07. Hourly mid band is 05. So 05 to 08 is the key area as we run into the jobs report in about 20 minutes. We'll see how that goes and we'll take it from there. Um, everybody have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic weekend. Watch your risk. Don't hand your week back. Big week for us. We're, we're, we're focusing on holding it uh, and keeping what we've got. We'll, we were picky yesterday and it worked out. It was really just one or two trade day. We're basically in the same mood today. I'm not going to do a ton. So be safe, be healthy, take care, train well. Great weekend. Talk to you Monday. Follow us over on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Princeton Trader. Check us out on Facebook and join us for a free trial at www.princetontrader.com. Trade them well.